to put this in perspective, uh, we have always looked very carefully at anybody who brought advertising proposals to our network and are very careful about asking, are you going to be our partner in success, much like newspapers were for a long time, or are you going to be our competitor? And we've had this conversation on numerous occasions. As a matter of fact, uh, I just did some video interviews with Spencer three or four weeks ago. And so this is not our first opportunity to meet. So with that being said, this deal came together very quickly. I was dealing with both of you uh, as a point of interest for you all. Uh, we often will play Trulia against Zillow, against Realtor.com, and try to negotiate the best package deals we can and the best pricing we can. Behind the scenes, I'm dealing with both of these individuals from Trulia and Zillow, and neither one of them knew what my negotiations were until you came together. So how did this happen so fast? Uh, well, we've always had a lot of respect for Trulia. They've built a huge audience, as you point out. Um, and over the last six weeks or so, our boards of directors had several meetings, and we were able to find common ground. So, um, I mean, Trulia is a, is a big company with a well-known consumer brand and a well-known brand in the real estate community, and Zillow is going to operate multiple brands. So we already do this with a company called Hot Pads and a company called Street Easy in New York, both of which are owned by Zillow. So the idea is to have the Zillow brand and the Trulia brand um, both out in the marketplace for consumers. Most consumers will probably never know that they're owned by the same company. Um, and when the transaction eventually closes late this year or early next, we'll operate these multiple brands in the real estate advertising space. Very similar to RealG operating six different brands. Yeah, or similar to multiple newspaper brands. Um, you know, you have uh, Tribune or Gannett or, or uh, News Corp operating multiple newspaper brands, um, and sometimes even in the same marketplace, even in the same city. Okay, and what's the thinking about having them as separate brands instead of combining them? D different consumers have different preferences for different brands for all sorts of different reasons. Maybe people like the color green or like the color blue, or um, they like certain functionality on one website or another. But um, this is something that uh, happens in other real or in other media categories outside of real estate, where um, Weather.com, for example, and Weather Underground are two of the leading weather websites, and they are owned by the same parent company, and yet they have different brands, and some people might choose to use weatherunderground.com, and some people might choose to use weather.com. Okay, and so this combination of the two brands, what does this mean to the consumer, and what does it mean to the realtors out here? Well, to, to realtors here, it means that we have a large audience that they can connect with, and we have much more resources to invest in software tools and other ways for agents to make a lot of money. I mean, I, thank you and thanks to Remax because we love Remax agents because, quite frankly, Remax agents like making money. Um, and we like agents that like making money <laughs> because they. Thank you. Uh, because Remax, Remax agents believe in investing in their business and growing their business. And therefore, they like advertising in order to make more money. So we have great, a lot of great Remax agents that advertise on Zillow and on Trulia, and um, I'm excited about that continuing. You, to a certain degree, are scaring some brokers, uh, some multiple listing services, and some realtor groups. How do you address that? Well, it's important to understand what Zillow is and, and what it isn't. So we're not a brokerage. We're not a franchisor. We're not a franchisee. Uh, we're not an MLS, we're not an association, we're a media company. We sell ads, not houses, and we're nothing more, nothing less. Um, you know, you, you, I mean, I like, I love that you told the story about, about only bringing a fork to the potluck, because that rings true. We feel like we're bringing something to the potluck. What we're bringing is a huge audience, and that huge audience has a lot of buyers and sellers and homeowners that want to see listings, they want to connect with local professionals, and that's what Zillow brings to the table, is we bring our audience. And <clears throat> making the comment that you're a media company, not a real estate company, uh, I have seen you quoted, or should I say misquoted, uh, talking about a 35%, 40% referral fee. Would you put that into context of what sure. you're trying to explain? Sure. Sure. What I'm trying to explain is that agents have lots of places that they can choose to spend money to generate business. They can pay referral fees for relocation transactions. They can um, choose to invest in advertising on, in newspapers or direct mail or outdoor advertising. Or they can buy online media from companies like Zillow. Um, and I think agents think about 
all these different ways to spend money to make money. And Zillow today and Trulia today combined have about 4% of what agents spend in the United States on advertising. So there's lots of different places they spend, and Zillow and Trulia are a very small part of it today. And we think eventually a lot of the, the agent's investment moves online because that's where the consumer is. And so that's the part of the pie that we're operating in is in the online real estate media space. Um, we don't charge referral fees. We're not a brokerage. Um, and uh, you know we sell ads. We sell impression-based advertising. So every time an agent's face is shown on Zillow, that's an impression, and that's what we sell. So the fear that some realtors have that one day you're going to decide you're going to charge referral fees instead of listing fees. We will not charge referral fees. No. We're, we're, we're a media company. I wouldn't expect the Denver Post would charge referral fees. That's not their business model, and that's not our business model. Um, you and I have had that discussion on several occasions, yes. <laughs> and my statement at that time and still stands true, as long as we're partners in success, we're happy. If we become competitors, you don't get any more of our listings. The, 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 <laughs> what I like about this guy is he's direct, right? Um, I, I, I hear you loud and clear. Uh, I, I hear you loud and clear. And I think, I mean, the reason that Remax has stayed a step ahead over the last 40 odd years is because you're incredibly direct with your employees, with your partners, with your, with your sales associates, and with your advertising channels like Zillow. So I appreciate it and I hear you. Thank you. I will get invited to speak here again, by the way. <laughs> There's some pushback that's starting uh, amongst some of the IDXs, MLSs, about not wanting to give listing information to various portals. How do you address that? Um, well, we're not a, because we're not a brokerage, we don't get listings via IDX from the MLS, unless the MLS chooses to syndicate listings either all of the listings in the community or on a broker-by-broker -broker basis. So on our own merits, we have to go to companies like Remax and convince them of, of the benefits of sending listings to Zillow. And we go to individual MLSs and try to convince them of the benefits. And the primary benefit is exposure to our audience of buyers and brand awareness and brand impressions for the brokerage and the MLS. And I think you know there, there's definitely a trend among MLSs to start treating Zillow and Trulia and Realtor.com um, much more the same I, that, as one another. I think the days of treating Realtor.com differently because of their sort of because they operate under the um, kind of under as, as the NAR as their benefactor, I think those days are, are rapidly fading. And so MLSs evaluate whether to send listings to Zillow on our merits and based on our business model, and many of them choose to do so, and some of them don't. And, uh, and that, of course, means that we also get listings directly from brokerages. Yes. Uh, I have encountered the resistance from boards of realtors to give franchisors, us as a group of realtors, our own listings, right. let alone theirs. So sometimes they're a little bit behind times in thinking. I, I mean, what gets lost in this conversation sometimes is the seller, right? I mean, I, th I know in our industry, People like to say the broker owns the listing, and I, I know the broker owns the listing, but it's the seller's house. And so the seller wants that house to get broad exposure. And I think it's very difficult for a listing agent to tell a seller that their listing will not be on a very large website in their local community because of, of who knows what, because they're afraid of their own shadow or because they're worried about uh, you know, what direction the industry might be going. I mean, the seller wants the listing marketed far and wide, and that's why they hired the agent to sell the listing. And, and that's the primary value proposition that, that we state when trying to have brokers or MLSs send listings to Zillow. And our agents, especially being as successful as they are, uh, are the ones that will sit with a seller and say, I'm going to get you maximum exposure. And in my success, I have seen it behooves everybody to be on Realtor.com, Zillow, Remax.com, or Local.com, and we use that as a competitive uh, advantage. With, with great effect, one of your one of your um, one of your brokerages is in a city where their main competitor chooses not to syndicate listings to Zillow and Trulia, and your office there has gained significant market share at the expense of their main competitor on this very point, saying to sellers, "Well, if you list with Remax, it will be distributed far and wide." And if you list with the other guy, it won't be. And, and they've had a great, a great run of it. Yes, they have. 
One complaint that uh, we hear consistently in our industry because it comes from the sellers is that often the information on many of the portals is not as accurate as it is off of the MLS or isn't updated as quickly or whatever. What uh, are you doing in your companies? Um, well, this is a problem, and it's, you know, the, the disadvantage of not being an IDX website is we get listings through this very complicated sort of bowl of spaghetti of listings feeds from the national franchisor, from individual local offices, sometimes from MLSs, and as a result, it can lead to accuracy issues. So what we're doing about it is we're redoubling our efforts to get more MLS direct feeds and more local brokerage feeds, and we've hired a great team to go and do that. Um, we've made great strides. Our listings are much more accurate today than they were a couple of years ago, but we still have further to go. Um, and it's a huge focus of ours because our consumers, our, our users, demand it. One question we keep hearing, especially from our agents and the broker owner managers here, is with you owning both companies, what is going to happen with pricing? Well, as I said, agents have a lot of different choices of where to advertise, and they still spend 96% of the, the 12 billion a year. Agents spend 12 billion a year in advertising, and 96% of that is spent not on Zillow or Trulia. Um, so we have a, you know, the governor on our pricing is the ROI that the agent gets. If we price our advertising too high, agents will advertise elsewhere, um, and we would it would behoove us to grow our share of the total of the $12 billion in advertising, um, that is the primary focus, is trying to get more agent advertising, not to increase prices. So the governor is the ROI, and agents' ad spend is just a click away. They can go spend ads on a lot of other places, including offline, which is where most of the spend still occurs. So um, we're are very ROI focused. Good, and one last question if I could. Uh, can you address the importance of mobile and how rapidly, in less than a year, mobile use has taken over from uh, desktop and well, computer? I mean, it's, it's quite unbelievable, actually. Um, uh, three years ago, we had 20 homes viewed every second on Zillow on a mobile device. Today, it's over 200 homes every second, and 70% of our usage is on mobile. So we don't even call the company Zillow.com anymore. 70% of our usage is on, on mobile. Um, so that's where the user is. The user used to be looking at, at the newspaper classifieds. Then over the last couple of years, they were looking on a desktop machine. And now the user is actually on, on a mobile device, you know, is, is on this thing. Um, and we have a huge product development force focused on that. Uh, in other words, we're at the forefront of software technology for touch screens and for tablets and for smartphones. So what that means to agents and brokers is they need to make sure that their listings and their brand are well represented on mobile because that's where the user is. You've got to fish where the fish are, and the audience is in mobile. Um, and if, you, if your business plan doesn't already capture that reality, you need to, you need to rethink the business plan because that's where the user is. And behind the scenes, we have been negotiating with you on mobile applications and so on for improving our own platform because we see the same thing happening. Um, I sincerely appreciate the straightforward answers to the leading brokers in the country. Thank you for sharing them. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.